Let's go ahead and get started. Go ahead and get started and get everybody home quicker. All right? Um, I don't know you. I'm Dave Carmichael, the chairman of the Public County Board of Commissioners, and we're delighted to have you here. Hope you brought some questions. Uh, we've got several of our staff here that um, I think I'll just let everybody introduce themselves. So you'll start with you. Uh, Rebecca Meredith, um, County Clerk and Board of Commissioners Executive Assistant. I'm Frank Baker, the County Administrator. Tabitha Pollard, the Finance Director. Chuck Hart, our Post Commissioner. We're here. James Stokes, uh, Board of Tax Assessors. Lori Ashmore, Director of Water and the Water System. Sandy Caker, Post 2 Commissioner. Everybody knows that guy. Brian Stover, uh, Post 4 Commissioner. And my assistant. Yes, Angela Ferris, uh, Senior Assistant to the uh, Chairman. And we're delighted to have a former Chairman Jerry Sheeran here with us to spend some time. And he is uh, right now the representative for our district. It includes what, three counties? 14. 14 counties. Here at Chattanooga. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, he's, the, he's the DOT district representing for us. So his background he really brings a lot to the table there. Well, um, as the chairman of the board of commissioners, I guess you can all tell me uh, what our main function is. You know, it's uh, really making policy. We don't uh, do the finances. We don't do the clerk work. We don't go out and assess homes. Um, <clears throat> we don't worry about the, uh, well, I guess we do worry about it, but we don't, we don't have to repair uh, sewer problems uh, or water. We, we make policy, and we are, try to make policy that would be consistent with what the citizens would, would want us to do. Of all the policies, the most important one to me is the budget. Because when we pass the budget in August, all five of us, uh, it's it's going to be what all the other departments act on as far as uh, what their allowances are to do the work that they want to get done. So this is very very important that uh, we hear from the citizens and hear what you all would like to see in the budget. Uh, last Friday in the office or in the, in the uh, boardroom, we had a workshop. It's the third annual Tabitha, Tabitha and I started three years ago, and it allowed about six, uh, seven citizens. This young man was there. Um, I forgot your name, Paul. Um, and so it gave the citizens in the room an opportunity to work with the staff and actually build their own budget on um, Microsoft Excel, I guess. Uh, at their tables and come up with uh, a millage rate from the things that they, the personnel issues they want to address and the capital items that they um, would approve that department heads had submitted. So um, that was an exercise we did last Friday and Tabitha and I had talked a month or so ago that we'd like to have two uh, budget town halls like this just to discuss the budget. Uh, so we'll get started, and I'm going to turn it over to your post commissioner for this area, um, Mr. Chuck Hart. I'm, I'm glad to be here today, and I'm glad you guys came out. I know that uh, a lot of times, you know, <coughs> it just doesn't seem like we get the participation I'd like to see, but I'm glad that y'all did come out. And uh, and I don't think, Tim, Tim, you mind me talking about you a little bit? Me and Tim have had a lot of conversations about the budget, and he thought enough to come out here tonight. And, Hopefully, me and him can continue ours. But also, uh, not trying to skirt the question you asked me about 92, I've got a, a man here that's going to come up here, and he's, uh, I'm going to go ahead and let him start, and then and then we'll, we'll rotate back into the budget. And that way, if he does need to go for some reason, again, he's going to get us the update on the 92 uh, widening, and, uh, and he'll answer any questions like that. I swore when I left office I wouldn't get behind another podium unless it was for a funeral. And I have done a couple funerals since then, but um, I got uh, elected by the state legislature to the Georgia Department of Transportation as a member of the Transportation Board last April. And uh, it's, it's a big district. It goes from here to Chattanooga. It's basically everything west of 75 until you get up into the Calhoun and Dalton area. And then it's on both sides of 75. Um, there are several really big projects in, our, in my district, um, certainly 
the two biggest ones are the Rome, uh, the, the road going from I-75 in Cartersville to Rome, which they've been working on since the 1980s. And then Highway 92, which is uh, going to be roughly a $240 million project that goes from uh, Douglas County to Cobb County. And, and then it's a lot more money because it's, they've spent hundreds of millions in Douglas County. And I know tell them what they're going to spend crossing Lake Altoona. Uh, I can't even imagine. That bridge may be $50, $75 million all by itself. But uh, Chuck called me today and he said, hey, if you can come tonight, I'd appreciate it and uh, give, give our guys a little bit of an update on what's happening on 92 in this part of the county. And so I had, I had a map in my office. I've got a big county map in my office. I've got little sticky notes on it of how much is planned and what year. Uh, and, I, and I've shown your commissioners this map. They've seen it. And um, probably in the next 10 years, well, 92 alone is like $240 million. Um, 61, there's going to be widenings on parts of 61. Cedar Crest Road, uh, the state's going to participate in some, at some level. Uh, the airport road, there's some money going out there. So I'm going to just, you know, throw a number out and figure that the, the state's going to be investing some $300 plus million dollars in Paulding County between now and 2030. And, and if I'm off, I'm off by very little. It may be a little more, a little less. And I see Scott Green kind of nodding. So he's, he, he, Scott would know more than I would about that. But um, right now, 92 is being widened uh, down here south. They've been working in Douglas County. They had to bore under a railroad track, which was uh, about a 10-year process. And uh, this is going to be one of the biggest, widest roads in this part of the state. They're actually making Highway 92 a six-lane road from Bill Carruth Parkway, at least to the county line. Scott, are they making it six lanes on into Douglas County too? All the way to I-20. All the way to I-20. So they're anticipating some significant traffic increases from the truck uh, the rail transfer station on 278. So they want to make sure they get ahead of that. And uh, they're going six lanes from there, and then they're going four lanes from Bill Carruth Parkway to the Cobb County line going north. So I have got these maps. Um, I'm going to put them out. See, that's my notes. I'll keep that in case anyone asks me anything, and I'll just put these on either side. The, uh, the highlighted areas are the, are the ones that I have um, actually confirmed the numbers, because the numbers change, as you can imagine, every time they start a project. So, uh, and they never go down, by the way, whenever they start a project. <laughs> and let's give you a back, some background on, um, on Highway 92. I've got an old text that uh, I asked your former boss about, I don't know how many, a year ago probably. I said, what's the name of the guy that told that worked for the state in 1981 who said, we need to four-lane Highway 92? And I can't ever remember his name, so I, I texted Pat, and she texted back like five names, and finally she hit the right one. A guy named Jim Layton worked for the Georgia DOT in, in the 70s and early 80s, and he was tasked with putting forth the future roadmap for the state of Georgia. And Jim Layton came up with a series of roads in Metro Atlanta that needed to be four-lane. And in 1981, the state of Georgia adopted his map and adopted his series of roads. And in 1981, the state of Georgia recognized that 92 in Pauling County needed to be four-lane. 1981. Uh, Y'all do your own map. How old were you in 1981? <laughs> so anyway, through however many administrations, and certainly through my administration and, and David Austin's and Dave Carmichael's administration, uh, there's been constant work by the county to get the state to four-lane Highway 92. And uh, it got finally put on a fast track probably about five or six years ago. And now it's happened. Uh, this, part of, this part of the county is going to see it. There's going to be a tremendous amount of uh, change that happens in this part of the county. And I actually talked to, to Chuck Hart about that today. Uh, I'm, my hope is the county gets real proactive on protecting that corridor. Uh, my opinion is it needs to be protected for commercial growth because in a county with no commercial uh, retail is your is your best bet for commercial. It's the best way to add to your tax base and lower taxes for the 
homeowner. I should shut up. I'm not in the county government anymore, so I'll stop saying that. Anyway, I've got some notes in case any of you guys have any questions. So is, are there any questions any of y'all want to ask? I tried to I tried to beef myself up on the southeast part of the county before I got here today. So yes, sir. What's your name? Um RJ Coyle. Hey Mr. Coyle. How you doing? Okay. Um I guess this might sound like a dumb question, but what uh, problem is this solving? Is this going to involve a bypass of um, 285 for downtown for trucks coming from Chattanooga headed out I-20 West? Or no, they're coming from the rail yard. The rail yard. Have you ever seen the sure. CSX over in Austell? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Road? yeah. I think there. I think the number I heard last number was between a thousand and fifteen hundred trucks a day are going to be going west on two seventy eight. Now, how many of them turn south on this road? I don't know. And how many of them continue to go further west and hit twenty seven? Uh, when the, the Savannah port's being deepened right now, and when that happens, you're going to see probably a tripling or a quadrupling of the amount of containers that are coming into the state of Georgia from what we got now. Uh, DOT's trying to get ahead of that, and that's why they went six lanes instead of four lanes. So is this going to be a lot of truck traffic then? From they there? don't know that, but they're trying to get ahead of it in case there is. Okay. Um, now, the four laning of the road since 1981 was to just get ahead of traffic. Really? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and the building of Bill Carruth Parkway uh, was one of the ways that GDOT thought they might lessen the impact of traffic. So many people were going north on 92, then worming their way through uh, northeast Paulding, south, uh, well, east and, excuse me, west and northwest Cobb to get to Lockheed and places like that every day. So Carruth Parkway was built initially, the West Tyrone Parkway, which was renamed Bill Carruth Parkway, was built to help facilitate traffic going into Cobb County every day. Then we did the other the other part of that, which goes on over to 278 uh, back when I was in office. So just to help get ahead of traffic. Okay. I gave you a very long answer to what was no, your but, question. I, I, I wasn't understanding because I understand that cross county traffic in 92, you know, can get very backed up in Hiram, um, and then to get up to Woodstock, it's a bit of a slog. But I guess I didn't understand that this would be truck traffic from the CSX. I'm thinking that that is what I was told when I asked why is this going to six lanes because it was already planned before I got in, in there and I asked uh, I asked the, the director of GDOT I'm like why are we going six lanes that's a big old highway and he said well if truck traffic coming out of the rail yard in Austell does the things we think it's going to do we want to get ahead of it. Right now I, I commute by there and I remember when they're first going to build it people were freaking out talking about how much volume was going to be it's not that bad no it's not but the trucks are all headed out down thornton road to i-20 so i don't know why they'd be coming out up thornton road and then back out down 92 that doesn't seem like a very a very good route well, the state trucker the state's oh, building right. the state's building what they call inland ports around the state right now okay and uh they built one up in murray county there's one in southeast i think maybe chatham county somewhere down in there uh and basically an inland port is a is what they envision is almost like the atlantic ocean goes to that place and because they're anticipating the truck the the trailer containers to be offloaded in savannah right. go by rail to different places in Georgia, get on a truck, and go from there to their final destination. You're right, right now, those trucks are going uh, east in towards Atlanta, and they're getting on I-20, but then a lot of them are turning and going west on I-20 towards Birmingham. So I think, I think GDOT was saying, okay, when this road gets built, you're gonna see, and all these additional containers come in, you're gonna see a lot of trucks wanna go west if they can find a way, and, you know, they'd be hammering us if that road was just four lane. Okay, that makes so, more sense. Thanks. Scott, you... I, I'd like to jump in just a second, Please and do. I know uh, trucks are an issue. And I think uh, one thing uh, the county did to help advance this project is we actually paid for the traffic studies back in 06 and 7 and 8 that would uh, help the, encourage the state to pick it up and then run with it. And our studies were really based on general growth. Um, I don't remember truck truck traffic itself being a, a big jump or a projection in the traffic. But the basic problem we had is 
Um, the studies had already been started up for the uh, Douglasville bypass, and they showed that they needed a six lane to get around Douglasville and headed starting to the north towards us. Now, if you've got a six lane going around Douglasville and then you hit 92 and then you head north, where do you drop it? Um, where do you drop it back to four lanes? And the state was kind of on the bubble between a four lane and a six lane. So we know we've got to get six lanes around Douglasville, but where do we drop it to four lanes? Well, the next logical point really was four miles north, all the way up at Bill Creek Parkway. You really couldn't drop it at Ridge Road, you really couldn't narrow it again. So where do you drop your bottleneck down? And once you get to Bill Creek Parkway, you've got two ways to go. So, in, in many cases, the state is erring on the low side and trying to keep it to a smaller project. In this case, they were on the bubble and they said, well, no, we've got to go ahead and bite the bullet and, and carry this thing to the sixth lane. I wish they had done that for 278 back in the 80s and 90s, now looking back, because it's, the projections, I'm sure, are probably greater than they ever thought of them. And, and you may second guess it later, but I think traffic's going to be greater than you can ever imagine, or the, the engineers can project it. I don't think there's any danger on being that lack of traffic, but I would say um, truck was an overriding concern in generating the number of lanes. Truck volume, the pure volume, is really what generated the six lanes. But I, you know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't dispute that it's going to be an important route for, for truck traffic. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Yes, my name is Tim Thompson. I've actually got two questions. The first one, I'm curious uh, on nine, Highway 92. At crossroads, what's the estimated time frame when they might be doing that? That map is there. We're it's gone now. It's already gone. Okay. Yeah. Um, I am trying to remember, but it's it's written on there, and I don't want to miss the. I've, I've highlighted it. Um, it's probably even better to see on the big map. Here's the thing. And uh, want to let you know that the the dates on those maps are <laughs> fluid. Management's yeah. desire <laughs> dates. Management desire dates. Okay, they are not funding dates. The funding date for Crossroads North is actually uh, last I heard was 2026. <clears throat> they are pushing the the right of way and everything to get it ready to let on a 2019 schedule, which is <clears throat> this year. So they want to be ready to let it this year, but right now we're in a holding pattern. We'll be in a holding pattern pattern waiting for money. Yeah, and, and what does that what does that term mean? <clears throat> Excuse me. Let to let it is that to start construction on it or bid, bid funding it, or yeah, send, send it out for bid and, and then potentially award a contract. But you, you hate to award a contract that you're going to wait later because you let it down and you got 50 bids and you pick a low bid and you don't really do anything for a few years. Um, I will say this: I found out today that the Cobb County section of this is on a dual track with the Paulding County section coming out of Cobb to the crossroads area where you're talking about. Mm -hmm. And a friend of mine has some land up there and he just got an offer for some of his land. So they are, they're actively in the right-of-way acquisition stage in Cobb. Um, I've heard, have you heard of any of any of the guys in the North Paulding? I, mean, I know they got some offers so far, but. Uh, yeah, the right-of-way is proceeding. Okay. It's, a, it's a twin project in Cobb and Paulding. Yeah, so anyway. Um, but you, you got your dates on there, and Scott's right. I use the word fluid because when it comes to government contracts, you know, there's just no telling when it's going to be. Um, uh, look, since 1981, we've been trying to get it done, so. Okay. Thank you. My, my second question, I'm just curious what the status is of the Third Army Exchange we keep hearing about. Is that still on track, or? We're looking at alternative, uh, alternative intersections on the interstate. Dave has been working very closely with the Bartow County Commission Chairman. They've brought me in to help me help me get GDOT on board with the new interchange that they want to move. It's, it's about a half a mile, maybe three quarters of a mile up the road. Bartow finds it better for them to do it that way. Um, but it's years away. I mean, just look. We may not see it in our lifetime. We might. but. It's years away getting. We announced today at GDOT a, an interchange that they've been working on in South Georgia forever. And it's out in the middle of nowhere where you're not even, where it's not even going to impact a lot of people. It's only like 40 or 50 million. This one up here, last I heard, was over 100, wasn't it, Dave? Yes. So it could be 200 million by then. That's a fifth of a billion dollars. And, you know, Congress is fighting over money all the time. So uh, I didn't give you an answer. I didn't give you a great answer because we don't know. 
But the environmental studies were already completed at the old location in Barto once it moved, and it looks like that's in everybody's best interest to move it. Okay. Thank you. No problem. <coughs> I'm going to leave these because I don't need them. I've got one in my office. So anybody that wants to keep them, um, as always, I'm still in the phone book if you need me. And um, also at my office. And you can reach me through the county also. So anytime you need anything, y'all just let me know. My job is to help the county and the cities move forward with GDOT projects. So anyway, I'll leave that with you. And if anybody else wants it, that's good. I'm going to head out the door. Good to see you guys. Take care. Thank you. He has been a savior when folks come up and ask about what they to do with those projects. So, and he spent time with uh, three or four folks. I've said his way, and he's uh, he's survived so long. I do appreciate that. Uh, another thing that I got to ask for, right? I know we're fixing to jump into this budget thing, but, but one thing is, is about the sewage. Is anybody interested in asking anybody? I got one lady here that I can I can help you with the Greystone situation. Laura, do you mind coming up and, and help me? It's nice to know people. Mm -hmm. Well, my question is really for you, Chuck. My name is Paul Taylor. I have a two-part question. Uh, this we're on the budget, it's appropriate. Last week, you guys, you approved $850,000, $830,000 to spend on a private sewage on private property over here at Kroger. You didn't have a lot of fanfare, so I'd like to know your rationale. And my second thing, where's the money coming from? Well, the money, Adam, is it not coming from the uh, fund balance? This year's fund balance so is $830,000, $830,000. Sitting there for this project, eight hundred fifty. Eight hundred fifty. Okay, I'll do eight fifty. Yes, it's coming from the total fund balance. So what's been accumulated over over the years? All right. Now, I'm, I'm glad she's. I'm glad and I'd like to know your rationale for right, approving well, it on private up, property. I'm glad she's up here, Mr. Taylor, because I can maybe I can help you a little bit with that. Now, whenever we talk about that and we talk about tenant fees and assessments and stuff, mm -hmm. what do you look at in twelve months as far as recovery? In the. Um, in terms of tap fees, yeah. the total projected tap fees is about $800,000 for all that's projected to happen at that, at that what's intersection. It's, what's it's, it's but with existing, we're probably talking about the hundred and hundred and eighty to two hundred thousand dollars um, And some of that is not, I mean, that's not Paulding County. That's, we're also, um, we have an obligation um, because of the location of that project to come uh, for, for tap fees. Can you speak to the, uh, the system that was up at Kroger? I mean, I'm talking about the one at Kroger that's on private property. Am I wrong on that? Well, is it not private property? It's running there, down the road right away, but it, it's... Yeah. There's actually a, a private land application system permitted by the state that serves Ridge Crossing. Okay. And, and the Kroger, that, that Kroger Plaza. Um, and it's been a challenging system over the years. Um, and so, if, environmentally. So we are, one of the things that, that is being done here is that gra the gravity sewer that is being proposed by the, by the developer of, of the remaining uh, properties in that basin is, is going to be extended north to be able for north for that developer to be able to connect to it's only being taken across um, Baker, I guess it's Dallas Nebo Baker Bridge Baker's right Bridge, there Dallas by Nebo. it's being taken across the right of, across the road right of way and then that developer from Ridge Crossing is required to bring their lines to the public sewer I'm not trying to be hard here, I'm just questioning why no, no, you spend $850,000 to a private person who could sell that land. What's, I know I'm going to hear the good old story, it's for the betterment, but that's we private do. property. We what do, do we want to get out of that as taxpayers given $850,000 of our tax money? Now, if I'm, if I'm wrong, shut me up and tell me where I'm wrong, but that's private property 
that we're giving the tax, we're giving them $850,000 of our money. What are we going to get? I'll, I'll say that there, there's another benefit that may not be an immediate benefit, but it's yeah, the, the, the economic development of that corn um, and, and the, the ability, to, the ability to, to bring additional commercial development to that intersection. Commercial um, up there on Bridge Road at the yes. river? And how much? And how much, yeah. I mean, what we, right now you got an auto zone, a Walgreens, and a Kroger Strip. What could possibly go in there to give us back $850,000 to a one person owner of all that property? No, because there's another corner that's going to open up. It's going to allow, I think, 40 or 60 what, acres. What corner? Where the, the Walgreens south, is? Yeah. The southwest corner behind, south yeah. of the. Yeah. Uh, of the the uh, farm caddy caddy corner from where the Kroger yes. is. so down Baker's the Bridge. Zones there down oh. Baker's Bridge. That's yeah, that's where we live. Down Baker's Bridge. Mm -hmm. What's the current revenue for that? Yeah, so I'm just say. adding. Cause, I mean, I'm I'm really perplexed. So I I can't get eight hundred fifty thousand given to my private property. Now correct me if I'm wrong. He could sell that tomorrow and make and put the money in his pocket. Am I right or wrong? What is he going to say? I'm just saying it, it, it doesn't somebody. belong to the county. It's private property. You, I think he's talking about the sewer line. That, there'll be a sewer line easement that will be there'll protected. Be, the the sewer the is dedicated to the county. Um, okay. it, it, is, it is public infrastructure that is being installed. And, okay. and the cost, if, if the county had to pay the whole total cost, they're paying half of it. I got not you. considering what was ever put in beforehand either. So there was $2 million put in a long time ago, about 15 years ago, and now we're going to be, ha so we're going to have $850,000 and almost $4 million worth of sewer. Now in the 70s, if we would have took advantage of the grants, we wouldn't be in the predicament exactly. that we're in now. So we can't back up, but to move economic, I mean, Kroger can move out because of that system failing. Yeah, they can, but well, I mean, I've been there for 22 years. Kroger's not going anywhere. You can say what you want, but I'm just saying, well, I'm not going anywhere. That too, and Kroger picked up and moved up. Well, I'm just saying. Well, I'm not trying to get an argument. All I want to know is, is private property worth about 850,000, and where's it coming from to pay for it? That's my question. Well, and, I, and I'm not arguing. I wasn't trying to argue with. And it never came up at well, the I meeting. Was, I wouldn't ask this question if it had been discussed at the meeting, like I'm asking now. I would have shut up, but it was just. Oh, it's a great project. Let's move on. Well, there's a lot of questions I had. Like, Mr. Taylor, I don't, I don't want you to shut up. I mean, that's, that's good. I'm glad that you do ask questions. But what you got to understand is if we don't develop those things, just like you were talking about that Kroger, I challenge you to walk in that Kroger. That's one of the busiest Krogers. I've been there all the time. I lived there. So if they put something the catty corner from that, what do you think, what do you think is going to happen? I mean, you get a Sprouts, you get a public market or something on the other side. Well, I'm just saying. And then now, th think about your special. Uh, purpose, you know, option tax. Think about the, the, the additional revenue. The reason why we're at 12 uh, or 11 or 12 percent is because we haven't thought about these things and done these projects. This project is about getting that number up so we don't have to keep raising taxes, so we don't have to put it all on the home. I understand that, but let's be realistic. I've been there 22 years. There's been nothing there for 22 years, and I don't expect there's going to be anything great there for the next 22 years. I think well, it's pretty Correct cool, me if I'm uh, wrong. Maybe you guys know more than we know, but it was never brought up that what is it going to be the return on the investment? That's my What return are we getting? There either, though, for well, to, come. to have economic development, uh, we're here at the budget meeting, and the reason y'all, well, a lot of people have concerns with our budget because of the uh, millage rate increase mm -hmm. and stuff like that. So how do you prevent from having to go up on taxes? And that's to give, give the offset back to the commercial end. I don't and do you, you do not get. How do you gain business? Uh, how do you create business, uh, an environment for businesses to come? It's with sewer. Uh, they'll never. Kroger came 22 years ago. Or whenever they didn't have no choice. But they're the number. I think the number two busiest Kroger in the state. And the reason they are that busy is because nothing can come around it because there's no sewer. So to offset the resident taxes, you have to have commercial. Yeah. How about you can't have commercial without a sewer. Though? 
How about the resident's quality of life? That comes in there somewhere, doesn't it? Right, but unfortunately with commercial growth, you, you, you're going to invest in corners such as that because there's a Kroger there already, there's a Walgreens there already, there's a Grand's there already, mm -hmm. there's an Auto Zone already. already. So it's better to con uh, concentrate in small areas such as that instead of going out there in the middle of nowhere where nobody's at. It's no different than the landfill we have right now. We put the landfill out there in the middle of nowhere, and now we have residents living behind, beside it. Yeah. So you can't, so I, I know your concerns, I really do, but to have growth that a lot of homeowners want to offset the tax base, you have to have commercial to go. The homeowners that don't live there? I don't know what you're saying. Well, that we live down there. 106. Okay. And uh, it's not that far from Kroger. So how far is that going to come to our home? It's just the one the land that they showed. I don't have any more questions. I mean, I'm done. I just want to ask a question and ask the rationale. It's a done deal. I understand it. I understand the big picture. But the little picture, I don't see any great thing happening for our investment of $850,000. Well, it's like he said, you could have went somewhere where it's bare to where you, you're <laughs> expecting that people are going to go. We're actually going to have a lot of that. They'll have, they'll have the ability to tie on the suit. How many business there? Can I ask a question along these lines? I heard through the rumor mill, you know how reliable that is, um, that there was going to be a sewage plant, something, something. Great. Something about Grace, I don't have my phone where I got the email, but they were going to run a sewage line along Pine Valley Road. Okay. You, is that, you is this a whole, there are two facts to have this, I opened so a new let's, let's, uh, work, let's work to I mean, more that, fully develop it. Um, we have, at, when, prior to Greystone, um, really just I making their final decision. I, I don't mean to no, do I'm done, no, I'm done. I'm, I'm done. I'm, is this a, I'm unrelated done. or related? No, this is actually a separate project. Oh, okay. Um, and it's, uh, we call it the East High Room Sewer. Okay. Um, it, Greystone, when they were going to be relocating, to Pauling County um, had an option of just doing their own sewer solution. Basically, putting a pump station in, pumping it down Pine, down Pine Valley toward our interconnect with Cobb County. And we, got, we talked with them about the opportunity to be able to have them contribute to a larger project which would open up sewer two more of the 92 corridor up toward Bill Carruth and position us to be able to serve more commercial development um, in that 92 corridor and in the Bill Carruth corridor up Licklaw Creek um, in, toward the, the Bill Carruth corridor. And so we're, um, we, in the fall of 2018, um, the board entered into a development agreement with Greystone for them to contribute um, to that East Hiram sewer project. We um, solicited proposals and we have a design build team working on a preliminary on preliminary engineering for that sewer now. Oh, um, okay. I guess I'm Greystone's the power company, right? Mm -hmm. Correct. Okay. Um, what, what, why are they doing sewer? Um, their location of their corporate headquarters um, at the Ridge 92 inter intersection. Uh, they used to be over on 278, right? Well, their main or their corporate headquarters is in, currently in Douglasville. So they can be bringing 300 dollars. Oh, so they're coming over to. Oh, okay. I did not know that. They're moving to Paulding, and so yeah, prior to relocating. Um, Prior to that, that some decisions okay. being made. We All right, so they moved to the Ridge yeah. in '92. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. And what kind of sewer line is this? It will be a gravity sewer line up uh, north on '92 to Lick Log Creek. So there's nothing along Pine Valley Road then. Uh, there's a force made along Pine Valley Road okay. that will uh, transport waste to uh, to our interconnect with Cobb County. Uh, and what kind of disruption are we looking at in terms of, because that's where I got 
because I live in the subdivision right across the street from here, and you know, the person, HOA president next to me said, hey, <coughs> yes, I didn't know. So that's, that's my question. What are we looking at in terms of traffic disruption, environmental impact? Traffic. We've got Sweetwater Creek there, which I'm sure is possibly a protected water well, resource. Well, and, and we don't have our direct, we don't have all of our, our preliminary design done yet. Okay. But typically, we we would cross with some kind of a directional drill under the creek, um, and the. Um, and, and we're in, in the back of the right of where we would be in the back edge of the right of way. Force main, fortunately, goes in really much quicker than a gravity sewer line. Uh, so the disruption along Pine Valley um, really would be, be relatively minimal. And let me, I'm, I'm picturing in my head, where is it connecting? It's Ridge Road in 92, which I'm, I'm visualizing, but right. where is it connecting to uh, uh, as it heads south of there or over to here? Where is it? Actually, I have a map that oh, I'll, be, I'll be happy to, to yeah, show you after the after the rest of the discussion. Okay, thanks. That'd be yeah. great. Um, you have a question. Uh, some of the homeowners associations have been concerned about that line coming down Pine, Hill, Pine Valley because it's going to the Cobb uh, mm -hmm. uh, line, and there's going to be disruption. Uh, schools and everything else is going to be affected by that. Uh, in your proposal <coughs> as compensation for a better quality of life, um, could you put in there that Raystone will contribute um, since we, I guess, the original uh, uh, <coughs> tail farm here was to have um, a water center, the natural dock center here. Um, why can't this be a time in which they put that center? I think they should pay. Um, people are going to be dis disrupted. And they can use the center here. We've got a lot of folk around here, a lot of seniors. And you got the land here. This would be a good time to save some money from the original plant and make brace on but it uh, contribute. I think they're going to have a park over. Aren't they going to have a park? Well, I'm talking about, I'm talking about the, uh, the compensation for the inconvenience that's going to happen. They say it's going to be minimal, but it's not going to be minimal because Pine Valley is a major road. And the subdivisions, as they come out into that road, are going to be disturbed in the morning. And that's compensation. And I'm sure Bruce Snow and this company, they're open for that. Why can't we get that center here? Actually, I, will, I, I have to say that our, our <coughs> agreement with Greystone for their contribution to this project um, was set. Um, about nine months ago, um, back in, in the fall of 2018. Um, and, and we now, Pauling County now has full responsibility for that project. Um, I'm not familiar with, with the, the project that you were, you were talking about, um, so I, but I, we, can, we can certainly work with you regarding disruption. I, you, you talk about disruption to traffic. We typically, restrict our hours and our contractor can work um, to to avoid that disruption to traffic flow in and out of neighborhoods um, and even to to the point of, of working on um, where they can open cut and where they can't. Well, why can't sometimes uh, quality of life be a consideration in the negotiation? That's my point. Uh, I was just going to say, as far as the contribution, as far as I think the brain is a $50 million uh, project here that's going to pay about a million and a half dollars a year to the county. So, and I know they're contributing to the, to the project itself. Uh, and as far as quality of life, that's why they're moving to Pauling County. This is a complete assignment. For them to say, I mean, for oh, their employees yeah. and stuff to be out here. <laughs> well, I'm just saying that that's why they do it. But, but isn't there a park attached to that? They, they're, they, they're contributing land, I believe, um, that will have a park. They got a ton of land. <laughs> I was just going to say, this is a complete side note. Greystone's been very generous 
<coughs> to our local schools, Paulding County schools, um, and donations to sports and that kind of thing. So, uh, I think they'll be a good neighbor. We're looking forward to having a uh, corporate citizen. Well, and, and we have a lot of friends who work for Grace Center that live in Paulding and work for Grace Center. Yeah, back on the uh, the Ridge Road sewer, a, a couple of questions. I was reading an article the other day in the Marietta Journal, and they were talking about the use of the word Pawnee County Board of Commissioners was going to help build the sewer. So I'm kind of curious, who who are we helping, and how much money are they contributing to it? And a second part question. I'm still confused with the budget. I don't I don't understand. The eight hundred fifty thousand dollars that we're talking about, if it's from the twenty nineteen budget or the the proposed twenty twenty that's coming up. You want to address the financial, and then I'll address the, the, the other part. I will. I will. So we have what's called a um, <coughs> tax, and that's basically your reserves that are set aside in case something comes up. Every year you go through the budget process. This was not part of the budget process in 2019. This came up, it will likely be that the majority, I guess, of this project will be completed in 2020. But it's not a part of 2020's budget discussion because it's used, it is a use of fund balance. It's just like excess for a rainy day fund or yes. something? Yes. Okay. Okay. And, and you asked about, about the participation. Um, the the eight hundred and fifty thousand dollars is actually a fixed amount of the of the overall project. Um, it was originally um, estimated at about a one point six million dollar project. Um, the develop the the other our party the party that the board entered the development agreement with. Um, is responsible for any overages and actually the bid prices came in substantially higher uh, we're talking about over over a two point um, possibly a 2.2 to 2.3 million dollar project are we talking about like some of the local businesses the Kroger and the, the those businesses right there are going to contribute to Kro Kroger the, the Ridge Crossing development uh, that includes Kroger and is also contributing to this as well as the property owner uh, with, some un with undeveloped properties. Last last question on that. Will there be any impact to the, the surrounding neighbors as far as sewer treatment? No, it's, it's going somewhere yeah. else. <laughs> it, it, the treatment is actually it's being pumped initially it's being pumped to our copper mine treatment plant which is up a, in the in, in Hiram um, as we continue to extend this East Hiram sewer though um, it will be it can be tributary to that and and it will flow to Cobb County for treatment okay thank you question about that because I know with surrounding counties our fees seem to be a little high on the high end. Is there plans to review that in the future? Because for small businesses, that can be a substantial chunk. We we are uh, going to be reviewing that, but I'd like to offer some a little bit of an explanation about why fees are higher here. Um, where those tap fees are based on the construction and the infrastructure investment that goes in that is put in place to serve those future connections and to recover the cost from those rather than our rate payer, our existing customer rate base. Um, we have small facilities. Wastewater side, we have uh, three separate locations of wastewater treatment. They're under five million gallons a day of capacity total. We also treat to some of the highest standards in the um, in in the surrounding area because of the size of the streams we discharge to and both of those things because we don't have the economies of scale of some of our adjacent communities and uh, the and the level of treatment that we have to provide drive up the cost 
uh, treatment. So just by way of explanation, that's why our costs comparatively are maybe a little higher, um, but uh, we will be reviewing that. We've, we've had that, those same conversations uh, with board members. Okay, perfect, thank you. All right, uh, I know we'll, we'll probably address some other things, but I, I want to get Tabitha up here and let her kind of explain the budget piece of it okay. to you guys. Uh, she had some handouts. Okay, I'm just going to do it from here if that's okay. That way I can drop. Can you see in the back? Okay, well, let's, let me look on that first. Are these the same handouts that we have? Yes. Okay. They're right here. Yes, they're, they're okay. the same handouts they have. Let me tell you what you do have first. Is that better? Have, is that better? Is that better? better? I, can, I can make it bigger in there. So you should have a list of personnel requests, and you should have a list of capital, and you also have um, a March budget update. So the March budget update basically just gives you the operational um, where we are as of the end of March. And for most of today, we're going to talk about a couple of different funds, but most of today goes from page one to page six. <coughs> So while I want everybody to understand, primarily the main purpose of today is that there is a um, taxpayer bill of rights that basically we're required to adhere to and it gets confused. So first off, we want to make sure that that confusion is eliminated and um, then we've given you an opportunity to speak as to what our budget includes. So if it, um, in the past, we had, up until a couple of years ago, we published a budget June 1st, then we have three public hearings and we have a tax increase, and then we adopt the budget. We have a public hearing for the budget and then we adopt it in August. That process has changed a little in that the last couple of years we've had a budget workshop. So. That gave all the commission the opportunity to talk to department heads and then the public could come in and participate. And if they had any questions, hopefully they could get those resolved. So from that, we've grown to this because we couldn't, not everybody can come out during the day. So we um, decided to do a couple of town halls to try to give you an idea of, of, of our budget process and how we got to where we are. and. Um, when the budget's adopted, what the plan is, and how what your responsibility is, or how you can how you can participate in that process. So we have gathered. What we do every year is we send out requests to the department heads, and they go through their budget. This year, they did a couple of things. They've given us a five-year plan, which we're not ready to discuss today, but we will bring it back um, in the next few months. It's not part of this 2020 budget that we're discussing. But they, they submit their list of capital items that they need, capital items, anything over $5,000 that has a useful lot, so a vehicle, something that you're going to use year after year. They submit their capital items and they submit their personnel request and any changes to operations. So they know if their fuel cost has gone up, they know if their um, postage has gone up, if printing has gone up, that they research that to find out what it's going to be for the next year and they submit that. We compile it all together. We did that this year. We've come up with um, our total requests are about $80 million. And our total um, revenue expectations are about $74 million. It's pretty typical for any year. Um, we did have a couple of revenues to increase this year, specifically 
we had um, title life moral tax. We've seen a little bit of, a, of an increase of that. So what that is is when a couple of years ago we lost your advent birthday tax, and now we um, you collect that when you pay the when you purchase the vehicle. That revenue source has been kind of on a roller coaster, and it had declined a little. It is creeping back up, and it's giving a little stability. Um, the state has passed a few changes that indicate that that, that is a stable source of revenue. Um, sales tax, I'll go over that in a minute, but sales tax has seen quite a bit of an increase over the past um, years, two years specifically. Sales tax was pretty level, and then we've seen quite a bit of an increase in that. So that's those are taxes that have increased, but they don't affect your property taxes. Um, so in a perfect world, what we're supposed to do is calculate what our budget should look like, what our budget needs to be for the upcoming year. We take all our revenue sources and we fix our millage rate according to what those needs are. That doesn't work well. <laughs> so what we, we have to balance the two. So um, let me go through some of those those numbers and show you what they are, what the assessments are, um, and see if it makes sense. So, about almost $1.6 million. The value of the mill this year is um, a little over $5 million. So you have a 10.49% increase. That's from a couple of things. You have your growth in construct. You have your reassessments and you have your construction. We're allowed to have the, um, receive the growth from construction without any advertisement because that's new. It's different from last year. The Growth from the reassessments, we're required to calculate what's called rollback. And when, this is just a piece of the calc, piece of the form that we use, but the calculation actually works out to be 5.63. So we have to roll the millage rate back 5.63 to be revenue neutral. Now, does that mean all of you would look identical and you see no tax increase? Not necessarily, because your assessment, every one of your assessments are different. So. Some of you might have changed the 10%, some of you might have changed 3%, some of you might have went backwards, I went down, I don't know. But we take the overall digest and calculate what the rollback would be so that overall we would be revenue neutral for the reassessment. And then if we were to, we put a millage rate in, this one had 6.5, but I've ran several different ones down here and it would be 15.45%. So that nasty ad that we have to advertise um, every year would say that Paul County Board of Commissioners plans to raise your taxes by 15.45% in the upcoming year. Um, there'll be a public hearing, it'll be on day one, day two, and day three. Um, if you use 6.5, you have 15.45% increase, generates 4.9 million. 6.079, which is what we had last year, you have a 7.98% 7, 7 increase, which is 2.8 million. And 5.63, there's no add. So the tricky thing about this is there's no, if you don't, if you decide to do a rollback, we plan to do a rollback, and we don't have an add, there is no going back at that point. So in the past, some of our the idea has been go ahead and advertise that you're going to have this and then you have the opportunity to go back because if you don't advertise 5.63 is it. You've got to go with rollback. There's, you can't do anything more according to state law. 
if you advertise a 6.079, you can go anywhere from 5.63 to 6.079. If you advertise a 6.5, you can go anywhere from 5.63 <coughs> to 6.5. So that um, could be up for discussion. So what does it do to tax bill? This is, um, I'm using round numbers because no, again, no one person is the same. So 182,000 last year, 40% assessed, 2,000 homestead, and again, I'm basing assumptions. Tax bill is about $2,100. Increased it by 10% um, this time. Tax bill goes to $2,300, almost 24. So here's the differences. It makes $44 increase to the um, m and Now the debt, let me talk about that a minute. A um, couple of years ago we had the um, bond for the jail on the ballot and it passed. We haven't put that on, on the tax bill yet, but we did incur a payment last year, but we wanted you to be able to see something coming out of the ground before we put it on there so that um, and we have an operational date hopefully of April of next year I believe and so that when we planned it we had originally planned for a half a meal that's what the debt was was structured for and that's really what the debt is but because we've had some increases to the digest we're going to need to increase it by a quarter meal. So the debt does increase by a quarter meal, um, or it should increase. They've got it's up to the commission, but it should increase in order to be able to pay the debt. And then your fire is 3.1, so your total tax bill increased by $238, 1037 to the school. And that's pretty much the breakdown. If you were to go to 6.5 instead of 6.079, it's about a $35 increase. So, um, from, to this number here. And it generates the $4 million that we looked at earlier. So, that all kind of makes sense? That's monthly, right? This is month, this is annual. This is annual. Here's month, that's month. Okay, debt service. So, what all obligations do we have to pay? Um, I don't know if, if you can really see that or not, so I'll just read through those. We have the conservation land that we did um, in 2007, and the courthouse and the jail bonds. The total debt service is $9.8 million. And then we have some um, revenue bonds. The total for those are one point seven million dollars it's one point eight million dollars so we our total debt service payments are eleven point six million dollars um to generate to to get there two point oh seven gives us ten point ten million one hundred ninety nine thousand our principal and interest is 11 million, so that'll show you kind of why we have to have it or why it's necessary. And 2.32 will generate 11.5 million. Your principal and interest payments are going to be 11.6 million, but you're going to have, so you'll still use a little bit of fund balance, but you're, you're going to have more um, growth in the digest next year. And hopefully you'll be able to come back off of that um, as time goes. Currently, the general fund subsidizes some of the payments until a lot, often the payments are due in August and you pay the taxes in October and November. So the general fund subsidizes that um, to get there. Revenue growth, again, we've already talked about this a little bit. Um, we've got about $1.6 million in other revenues besides property taxes, um, 5.63 generates. My other revenues are $1.6 million decreased in village rate, will increase about $569,000. Um, 
which if you put these two together, you get the 2.2, and then 6.0 mils will generate 2.7 more, giving you 4.9, and 6.5 to the 7 mils. I mean, 7, 7 million. So why do we need that? Our expenses this year, our revenues came in. This does not include capital. And the primary reason I didn't include capital in this because that gets confusing um, because I'm going, I'm using the <coughs> assumption that we will plan to use fund balance for not rather than operating for capital. Um, so I didn't pull that in. I just pulled in salaries, benefits, and operating. So our, if you look at just our salary, salaries and benefits, this is new personnel and any additional ben benefit costs, the proposed increases that we have, et cetera. Uh, maybe some partial, partial employees. Uh, we had some detention, detention officers that we hired that were budgeted in partial year in 19, but they'll be a full year in 2020. So that makes up this four, four million. Most of that is made up on your new personnel sheet that each one of you have. So if you want to see what that is, look at that new personnel sheet. That's where we want to hear back from you today, is we want what do you want to see? What are you willing to pay for? What, what should be included? What shouldn't be included? The operating cost increase from 2019's budget is 25.9 and 2020's 29.7. So we have an increase of 3.8. I'm going to narrow that down a little bit because I have ups and downs in quite a few departments. But overall, we have an increase to asphalt paving in the amount of $3 million. Um, that paves about 15 more miles than we've paid in the past. So that gets, takes care of some of the issues um, that you see on the roadways. The 805,000, that's your additional fuel cost. It's, all, it's across the board. That's additional fuel cost, it's additional postage, it's additional, um, if you have delivery charges, it's, it's just additional cost of doing business, pretty much. Um, I could get in the weeds of that, but I didn't think it would be necessary for today. So, salary increases, those are things we look at every year. Do we give them, do we not? Um, two years ago, we did a salary study. We implemented it. We, last year was the first year of the full salary study. We did not do a raise last year. Um, so how do you treat your employees? How should we? What should we expect? Um, it, it is competitive. So our, job, our jobs are very competitive with the private. And in some cases, we are losing because those guys got raises and county government didn't get raises. So that's another thing that we're here to, to hear from you. The calculation of what that costs is about 850 um, to get 4% would be about 1.3 million and 5.1. Those numbers came from the salary study people. So what we did is went back to them and said, what if we missed because we implemented, well, you did a salary study two years ago. So if you were to do that today, where would we fall? And they said, well, in the first year, you really should have done 2.6. And last year you should have done 2.5. So I used the 2.6, I added those together to get 5.1, and then I gave them medium. So I just pulled that out of my hat. So this is kind of the reason for discussion um, today. This is why, this is how we have to balance the budget. So if we don't have enough revenues, and we've got more expend more expenses, and we need to hear from you of how we we're expecting to get there. Yes, ma'am. Um, are you wanting the feedback from us, like now? Like raise your hand. Um, let me get ideas. through some of this, and then okay. yeah, we'll we'll okay. take questions and uh, comments and anything. You could write it on that piece of paper and give it back to us. However, you're comfortable. Okay. Um. So. Surrounding millage rates. Where does pollen? This is these are 2018 millage rates. If you take, there are several ways you can do this because not everybody has debt, not everybody has fire, 
and you'll see here there are a couple of miscellaneous. This one specifically was EMS, and this one up here, um, Harrelson has a millage rate for recreation, and they have a millage rate for sanitation um, added to their tax bill. So if you look at all of them, this is Pauling's, and we fall, on this particular chart, we fall third from the top. Now if you sort by M and O and look at it, we're in the middle, closer to the bottom for operations. Um, this standard exemption, you can't really look at millage rate to millage rate and get a good <coughs> comparison by, for counties because every, they have different homesteads. So your homestead is if you live in your property, you get, in Paulding, it's a $2,000 deduction. And other counties are a little different. And what changes that significantly are these homestead freezes. So that means your property, if it goes up, it's froze at that base value and it won't be taxed, but except for just on that base value. There's no increase to that assessment. Does that kind of make sense? And now, Chuck, I'll give it back to you. And yeah, so the, uh, you see the challenges, you know, that we face. And it's just like uh, the chairman said, you know, uh, when we were running, he actually said at his town hall meeting the other day, you know, we, we've got that little bitty slither of, of uh, commercial. And, uh, and, and to y'all's point, you know, I know that we're going to do some things that, you know, you may think, uh, you know, hey, this is, this is crazy. Come to us, talk to us. because. This thing here, this wasn't, uh, this was looked at too by some other people, you know, this this thing, what this project at Ridge Road was, uh, is kind of a step, you know, I think in the right direction and, and things that we want to want to do, we want to start planting those seeds. Because years ago we planted seeds of, of small housing, PRDs, and, and some other things, and, and some of that's outgrown everything, it's outgrown the business side of it. So we've got to do something, you know, we got to put something in, and it may take it a couple of years, two or three years to come up. But if we don't, that, that number just, I've watched it. <laughs> that's why I, that's why I ran, you know, it, it just kept going, you know, getting smaller and smaller. And me as a, me as a homeowner, I don't, I don't want to blunt all the taxes, you know what I mean? And, and then when we look at this, this challenge with the budget, you know, it's, none of us want to pay more taxes. I, mean, I don't. But, I, but also, I've worked for the county, and I've been the guy who got the paycheck, too. You know, should one of us fall over here in just a minute, we want somebody to be here to put something on our chest and shock us back in. And uh, we don't want it to be somebody we just trained. We want it to be somebody that's here and they love being here, you know. And, uh, and, and, and and to do that, we've got to furnish them at least something that's competitive. Now, if if they want to drive to Atlanta, sure they might do better. And if they want want to go to, to uh, the the west side, they're probably going to make less. But but I think we're we're hitting in the right place. But we've got to do things to retain these people. We've had we've had some issues, you know. And and I think we're working through them. Go ahead. Um, have you? I've heard you've had issues with some of the law enforcement officers leaving to go work in Cobb or Atlanta. Is that fire in, fire in. Uh, right. And how is that? I didn't see anything in there in the numbers, but how is that looking? Right. Yeah. Uh, okay. I'd love to see more and, and have them paid more. Right. And, and I would too, but, but some, of the, some of the things we're trying to do is uh, one of the things that, that entices those guys is, is basically not having to work till they're 67, which we don't want a 67-year-old guy come running in here with a badge. We want 40, a 30 or 40-year-old stud running in here, you know, grabbing us up and taking us out. So when that, with that being said, we need to figure out a way to make it attractive so if they make less money and have to work three jobs, we do need to give them some kind of little check and get them out. And, and we're working on some things that, that they can invest in that's going to help them and, and some good solutions that will help everybody around the board. And we, it won't cost the county, it'll cost them but, you know, initially, and, and it'll help them to get out a little bit earlier. And that, that should attract them. Because, see, once you got buy-in, you know what I mean? Right. You know, then you, then you what's happening, we're not losing the guys we just got. We're losing the guys that got, you know, going, they're in there five, six, seven years, and, and then we're losing them. Well, that's when we need to hang on to them. You know what I mean? We've got a lot of money invested in these guys, especially on the... Sheriff's side, it's, it's uh, I wish yeah, they, I'd heard some of the guys we invest a lot of money in that, them. And then they moved go. on now on, on the counter side of that, though, we do grab people from the west, 
they come out here because we're a little bit better. You see what I mean? Some right. people that's willing to drive this far. Okay. Thanks. The 2020 proposed budget, if we didn't change a single thing in there, add or subtract, what kind of uh, mills rate increase will we be looking at? And I also like to go back when we we're talking about the uh, rainy day fund. Can you tell me what the total amount that's in there is? Okay. Okay. Thank you. I'm going to give you the total amount, and then I'm going to give you the, the unassigned amount, because the assigned amount basically has already been obligated, okay. so no reason to really look at that. But the total fund balance as of June 30th, 2018 was $64.4 million. The unassigned amount is $52.5 million. The unassigned now, amount? Yes. Okay. Now, why does that number need to be so high, or why does it need to be up there? Um, number one... We can't, uh, it's, I'm thinking of the way, best way to explain this. We don't receive tax revenue until October or November. But obviously most of our, our bills come to you in July. So we, we're making paychecks. We do not, like a lot of counties, we do not borrow money to get through to that third year. I mean that, that third of the year. So if you take $70 million and a quarter of that needs to be available to fund that first part of the year, plus you need a little bit more because like I said earlier, the August payment, the August debt payment, so that, that $11 million is due August 1st. So to pay the bills, you've just gotten to about 20, $22 million maybe just to pay the bills from July to October. Then you've got to have, um, this is kind of interesting to me, and I'm kind of proud to be able to say it, I guess, but the, back in 2009 when we had the flood, we had a lot of FEMA um, projects. The cost of those projects was well into the millions of dollars. Um, I received the final pay from FEMA this week for that 10 years ago for that project. Um, so, you know, you have the, the money available in case of a disaster. Um, you have to have, to have that, those funds available. Um, there are some, if, if you have development or a project or something that would be um, good for the county, then you have, you know, a little bit of, a, a little bit of availability to be able to, um, to, to meet those needs without hitting taxes but primarily is to be able to fund that first quarter of the year and any disaster that you may possibly have. So th these figures are after we've already taken out the 850? No, no. This, th that, the number I just gave you is pre. It doesn't, that, that 850 will come from that number. Okay. Okay. Yes, ma'am. When you were, um, mentioning the bonds that we have to pay. I don't believe I heard you say anything about the film studio, okay. which includes the water tank at the airport. Where do they come in? Uh, they do. They're, those are the, um, let me see if I can maybe make this bigger. Those are the No, but that's okay. So I'm going to I think that might help. Okay, thank you.
um, when you have bonded an issue to buy um, property to develop an, um, a park, an industrial park, and um, then in 2012, we also built a sewer plant down close to the Georgia. And that's been repaid with water and sewer funds, the, the, the five million years. This is the total issue. This is the amount that was bonded. So it's not what was outstanding. I'll decrease it a minute so you can see. This is what you're looking for. This is the $1.1 million that was for the water tank at the airport. And this is for the $6.8 million for the film studio. That, since you asked, the interest rates are 1.57 and 5.47. We're in the lower end of those. Principal and interest is 285 is the principal, and 276 is the um, interest for that particular debt. Your, this isn't a grand total, but it's roughly about $568,000 a year. And what about the taxiway widening bond? That one is on down here. So, and then in 2013, we did a bond issue for the, um, some asphalt uh, to put top coat on in some development streets. And this is the 2014 airport issue that was issued in, in the amount of $3.6 million. The amount outstanding right now is $1.3 million. And the debt on that is roughly $400,000. Thank you. I don't know if you know the number or able to say, um, how much money has the frivolous lawsuits cost us where the other, a handful of citizens have been suing the county for all the years? On the airport? Yeah. There are several parties involved with that, so I would have to tell you the amount of legal fees for the county. Mm -hmm. um, and then you have the other entities that are included in that as well, and I don't have their their amounts. Mm -hmm. We're currently, um, we've got about 200000 roughly in, in the 2019 budget. Mm -hmm. um, not all of that is for law, lawsuits, though, so I'd have to look a little closer to tell you exactly what lawsuits and what's not. The airport authorities was 144000 for the for 2018, or, or FY 2018. FY Thank you. Yes. I have a question. I want to go back to the building train. Was that against them, or was that brought by the airport? Go back to the Sorry. <laughs> um, it's all that's been sued to the airport authority. The airport authority hasn't sued anybody. Okay. <clears throat> I'm going back to it. Okay. And where you find why you're finding that, I'll yes, go ahead and ask my question. Um, basically, if I, I just want to make sure I'm understanding. Uh -huh. you, you, the current revenue is anticipated at about seventy-four million, correct? Yes, ma'am. Okay, and your budget is about eighty million, as it stands now. What you propose? Yes. Yeah, your proposed yes. budget, and a large percentage of that is the new staffing changes, with either trying to retain, you know, qualified people in these county jobs. Okay, yes, is, is is that correct? Yes, ma'am. Okay, now. I guess what I'm wondering is, when I look at the new staffing plan, there's only a small amount of that that the sheriff department would be necessarily benefiting from. Which, from what I'm hearing, a lot of citizens may be concerned and you know, want to make sure those guys are taken care of. So, some of these administrative, because I you want feedback on us, some of these administrative things that, I mean, I think they're nice to have, uh -huh. you know, and it does make, you know, whoever's in that position, you know, life easier, easier to have a deputy, of course. But is the, have you guys seen such a, a growth in the, the burden of running the county 
you know, that you kind of need to add some of these deputy positions that I'm seeing and a lot of the additional administrative positions. I'm trying to, I mean, the sheriff department I get, but I'm, I'm trying to wrap my mind around some of the other categories. There is a lot. Um, several years ago, we did, we tried to do, provide as the best service we could possibly provide. And we did that with reduced staffing, and we did that a couple of different ways. Um, we had actually a staff reduction at one time, and then we had, we froze some positions and did not fill those positions. Um, for an extended amount of time. And then we had some furlough, some employee furlough. Those were several years ago. Um, as the economy comes back, yes, there are additional, there are additional services that each one of our departments are expected to be able to give a level of service for to the citizens. So in some of those cases, what you're looking at is uh, the, the time, the response time that you would like to see. So specifically in like your permitting and developments and those kind of things, if you want to apply for a permit and have somebody come out and do your inspection within 24 or 48 hours or whatever, we have to have the staffing to do that. If we're going to have an overabundance of permits, we can get two of those. If one person can do as, as much as they can, two people can do as much as they can. But if they can't physically do it, then it's just going to be another day. But so those are the kinds of things that we're that we're looking at. Um, can some of those reduce some of those positions be reduced? They can. Will you be impacted by some of them? Yes. Some of you will be impacted more than others, depending on where what your what your interaction with the government is. So if you're looking to get a business license. Um, and we have two people currently doing business license, well, they have an overabundance. They may take three or four longer than you think is you're willing to give to get that back, not because they're slow, but because they have an overabundance during, you know, the overabundance of applications during that time, maybe. I mean, would we necessarily be negatively impacted or would this level of service that we're currently receiving be the same? Well, we would try to not be negatively impacted. I mean, that is never any county employee's goal is to negatively impact the citizens, is to provide the service that they can possibly provide. But, and to be honest and tell you what that, that um, what your expectation should be. So what, what I've done, I don't think I did it out to that side though. Growth will make it worse. If we get bigger and we don't hire more people. And you don't have people. Goes negative. That's right. It's going to get slower and slower. If you don't, as, as growth occurs, if you don't add people to, to help with that growth, then it's going to get, you know, your delay time is going to get slower and slower. Can you say some of those should be done this year and some of those should be done next year? Possibly. Um, that those are the kinds of things that we're looking to hear back from you. The total on the sheriff's department, I will tell you, is almost half of the total request. So look at the sheriff and detention. Oh, and detention. And, and also, you were talking about personnel versus capital. A little over half of that is personnel, but some of that yeah. capital is like cars. Yeah, so you it's all have, that. You know, if we do yeah. Is yes. the raises for these? County employees, is that included in that four million? Would that be an addition to that four million? It'd be an addition. Be an addition to that four million. So we'd be looking at an even higher millage rate, possibly, than what's up there now, because it's based on this number, what you have up there now. So it's four plus to whatever the numbers were, two, three. Yes. Okay. Okay. And one more question. And I guess I think I know the answer. For instance, HV helper, I guess it's a salary of fifty-five thousand eight. Why, what's the department total of 172? Is that benefits or what is that? The 172 should be the total of all of his requests. The okay. 55 is not salary only, it's salary and benefits. Salary and benefits, okay. Right, I got that. 
but that includes everything in that department. That's where that number is due. Okay. It, it includes all the personnel, and then on the capital sheet, it includes all the capital. Got you. Speaking of the so-called frivolous lawsuits <coughs> that the citizens um, filed against the county and the airport authority and the IBA, primarily in order to protect our tax dollars, like the $3.6 million taxiway bond, because we knew the risk involved with spending tax dollars um, on a private business, uh, the risk of them reneging on the payments, which Brett Smith proved us right. But speaking of those airport lawsuits, I have a question for Chairman Carmichael, please. Recently, thank you. Recently, the BOC approved an early pay budget payment to the airport because according to uh, Terry Tibbetts, the airport director, they're you know, in, in bad financial shape, primarily due to all the lawsuits and all their legal expenses. Some citizens can stop those. Um, <clears throat> right. This isn't Facebook, okay? So. Exactly. I'm saying. You know, right. Right now. The county and the airport authority could stop those lawsuits, well, and we can get this county to the Actually, the citizens are not suing the county at this time, the airport authority, and the IBA. Mm -hmm. and the IBA, because they went beyond their Stop legal the scope. Area their Sorry, legal I'm scope in spending our tax dollars at the airport, okay? Like the water tank, okay? So there's a reason. Mm -hmm. If you ever want to talk and find out the facts, get in touch. At any rate, so, so yesterday, the airport authority approved two projects <coughs> at the airport. They're going to move their office space to vacant office space, I assume it was Brett Smith's, and renovate it by putting in a conference room, which they already have, and a work room. And also, you're going to replace the sign, the airport sign up at 278, get rid of Silver Comet Field, and it will say the actual name of the airport, which is Paulding Northwest Atlanta Airport. I, along with many citizens, are curious as to why it, the airport is spending money on two projects that are far from urgent when they're supposedly in such bad shape that they had to come to us for an early payment. And which Terry Tibbetts admitted to Ron Davis when Ron asked him what's going to happen come time, you know, later on in the year and you need more money. And he said, well, I'll come back to you. So it's almost like, you know, chances are it's going to end up being an extra payment, not just an early payment. So can you please explain, since you sit on that board, the justification behind these two projects? Uh, the fact that the board members that are citizens and officials of the county feel like to uh, if you go inside of the terminal and you look at Pauley Northwest Atlanta Airport, that was the original FAA approved name. So trying to get back to kind of our roots with uh, what our original name was on changing the rooms around it to uh, offer more space so that uh, those spaces can be rented out to a, a company or a business that uh, can be more attractive to the space and generate revenue than uh, the way the, the way they're uh, organized at the present time. I'm all for getting rid of Silver Comet Field <laughs> sign or, or or name or any association yeah, with the airport. Do you agree with the board? Um, no, and that wasn't my question. How can they justify doing that now? What's the urgency behind it? Well, how can the Paulding Six justify? generating a requirement for $144,000 in legal fees. 
So let me throw the question back at you. Well, you seem to be forgetting that the city of Atlanta is suing you in the airport authority, that Brett Smith is suing the airport authority in federal court. So well, well, our, our, that, our suits you know, right now are on the back burner. Of the six, is that correct? Yes, I am, okay. proudly. And we need the property to develop that the Pauling Six sued the EPD that's slowing down the progress of being able to develop our infrastructure in our airport because of the Pauling Six. What we did was we okay, made you well. accountable for we're a project for that did not qualify for a roadway drainage project. For your lawsuit. I have no idea. Listen, I know you guys, y'all have differences of opinion on this, and you'll stick to your guns that you're exactly right, you, you know, and to be honest with you, I, I mean, I, I, see it, I, I don't see it your way either now, uh, and I'm hoping that somewhere going forward, you know what I mean, that that, uh, that we can all join together now that the commercialism, no, I'm just saying now that it's dead and uh, and it's buried and we've got a uh, flower on the grave, I hope that uh, that we can go forward with our general aviation and, and the kind of money that the state's given us for this uh, the school and make that thing thrive and make it, it do something. That way, these taxes, what we're talking about, these little commercial things we're doing now, that'll help. But that will help tremendously. Amen. You know, uh, there's some things going on out there right now. They've actually broken loose a little bit. And it's because of the opinion of people. And I know that the opinion held it down somehow. And I know you did it to try to protect, put a protective layer around it. So, I mean, I get that, you know, we both have reasons for believing what we believe. But at some point, we need to bury the argument, too, and put a, and put a, a, a flower on it, and bury the lawsuits, and bury everything. Just join hands and go out here and make that thing successful. I mean, uh, can we agree to that? I mean, don't you want it, do you want the airport to be successful? I would like the airport to be a successful general aviation Good. airport, Good. which I want it from the get-go. Mm -hmm. But you know what? Yeah, My question to Mr. Carmichael was, was what had I nothing to do, weeds, nothing to do opinions. with where you, what you're saying. And you know what? I, I'm going to be honest right now. I'm so tired of people acting like you know, ignorance is bliss by saying commercialization is dead. If that were the case, Brett Smith would not be suing us right now, or the airport authority. So maybe the FAA shut the environmental assessment down because the demands for the, the EA were not met. However, that doesn't mean that it's a dead issue. This is the first time I'm saying anything publicly about that. I'm so tired of y'all acting like we don't have a problem anymore. Well, me, and we if do. We know, if if we try to make it, you said, you said in your own words just then that you want, you want general aviation to thrive out there. Yes, I, that's I do. That's what we want. And okay. that's what we're going to try to so, do. But, but now listen, it's not going to with a big old shadow. It's really not. Part of that shadow left, and we're already seeing activity. So if we can get the rest of the shadow, it's going to. Eat. And and hey, I can't tell you what. I mean, you, we live in a free country. You can you can fight this how you want to fight this. And uh, but we're going to fight it the way we want to fight it. And that's to try to promote the growth <coughs> and do what we can to make the growth you know positive. Okay. Is that good? Um, that's we fine. That, right? That's what you said. You like general aviation. That's what we want. I'm in favor of a successful general aviation airport, but not if it means breaking the law. If commercialization okay. was still on the table, Brad Smith would not be suing us, right? That's right. Because it wouldn't be for the commercialization. And he'd still be out there. I'm sorry. And he'd be operating out there. Why do you think he's suing me? Hey, hey, I'll tell you what. You know what? This is not the place. This is not the place. We'll talk about but. This later. <laughs> But uh, but has anybody got any more questions I you know, around the can? Around, I mean, I'm not making little of, of this. I felt that was an appropriate question to Mr. Carmichael since this is a budget hearing yes, or a budget uh, meeting, and I wanted to know why money that we gave an early budget payment was not spent the way we expected it to be spent. So just just explaining why I felt it was appropriate. I'm done. Thank you. All right. I just wanted to change gears a little bit. Yes, ma'am. Um, about the question I asked earlier today to you. And you may not have an answer, but I want you to take my my suggestion with you. 
I read that the parks were going there, the, all of the trails for walking and running were going to be oh, yeah. paved with concrete. And I don't know if that's true or it isn't, but I just wanted to give you my husband's input because he's a runner. And he and my daughter actually need, for their physical conditions, the trails, not the concrete. And if you're a runner, you understand why that happens sometimes. Um, and I apologize, I didn't address that, but I will give a Michael. That, that's, that, you know, that's a Michael question, so. Uh, <laughs> it but. is, but you can take that question to him. Yes, and um, I know that that affects the budget too, because you're gonna be more in Congress. So, um, you know, just keep in mind that there are people that can't use the concrete trails or the, the paved trails. Yeah, but when I talk to them, I'm gonna be happy. Okay. Well, I, that way you'll know how many miles of what they're looking at, and you can give him your input. Thank you. Okay. Who else? Yeah, I have less. So you said let Michael know about the trail? Because I, 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 I use the trail all the time. I use Silk Cone all the time, and I didn't know they were planning on all of it. <laughs> so, yeah, I'll send him a message about that. Okay. No. You're, you're the same way. You don't want to Oh, Lord, no. Yeah. It, it's back in now. <laughs> But y'all utilize that rubber. Yeah, the thing has got that rubber on it. That's good. Just like the party. Yeah. The party. Anybody else? Yes. Yes, sir. I apologize. The last time I asked two questions, and I don't think you answered the first one. If you did, I apologize. I didn't catch it. But with the proposed budget, with no changes, what kind of millage rate increase are we looking at right now? With with no changes. If you had no changes, you'd be looking at just. Seven. Seven, uh, seven mills. Mm -hmm. okay. Does that include the asphalt? That includes the asphalt. And no rates. The bottom. Yes. Uh, That's it. Yes. Well, probably a little four. Yeah. What's our current balance rate? Six point oh seven nine. So your advertisement would say that you were going to increase um, in taxes by about one percent. Oh, six, 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 seven. If we, if we, the increase have to be advertised also? No. So, are we just having a big gas for more money? No. We're, well, <coughs> no, we're getting your answer. 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 We're really are. We're trying to figure out what people feel like. That's, uh, they came to that budget meeting. People sat at that table. That was awesome. We had this today. This is awesome. We're going to have another one. And guys, at the end of the day, you can hold our feet to the fire because you're telling us what you want. You're telling us, I mean, if you're, yeah, exactly, or don't. And, well, uh, I mean, I'm just still impressed from the clarity. <laughs> 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 oh, look, 92 is different. Yeah, yeah. I know, but you know, people, I need. That's my quality of life. That's well, my area. That's, and guys, you know, I, start I, talking about trucks going up down the road and all these buildings. Businesses popping up. No. No, heck no. I, I moved to Akron 25 years ago not to live in that. I moved to the country, and they're getting closer and closer to me. And, um, uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I've been here 52 years now. Almost 52 years now. The people make a conscious decision to move out here. It's not the life of luxury in Atlanta. So you give up a little bit to live I mean, out here. And we don't need every fancy jail, every fancy, fancy everything. This is Paulding County. We accept that and we know that. And I was looking at our debt rate compared to other counties. Pretty doggone high. And I guess you could say because we're so far behind, we're trying to catch up, whatever the case may be. But we're putting... And again, I'm not trying to second guess anybody, but this is polling. We're not. We give up something to live out here. We give up the amenity. We give up the some things you give up to live here. At least I do anyway. Well, the board didn't appoint the jail, but you know it's. it's I'm not knocking. I mean, it's nice, yeah. but you know, something we just don't need out here to keep up with the Joneses per se. Yeah. To pay a millage rate of two percent, which is more than look like every county up there, but one. If I looked at it correctly, with the highest some of those bond rate in the, out of the 13 counties, will encourage us to get out here and, and, and increase this uh, the, the development side of the commercial side. Well, of we the need side that, we need business out here. There's no question about it. Absolutely. 
Greystone's coming. There's a lot of good things coming. I mean, and that's what we're trying to set up. Yeah, I can't. And I hate it. Yeah, up for it. I mean, it's just yeah, different counties take M and O. I mean, it's different. You can't count M and O because we all do cost money, different money to operate different counties. But when you look at the debt service, two percent we're going up another quarter. I think is what you said. We're the highest out of how many counties are up there. And I understand that we're. I don't know. It's just. We lived out here, we'd give up something to live out in Paulding County. You know, Chad, Chad Hunton was, I thought he was going to be here. Uh, Sheriff Gullich wasn't available. But I can remember when Sheriff Gullich was selling, lobbying the citizens from the jail, which, uh, which was mentioned before, you know, was on the ballot. Uh, but I, I was fearful that the feds would come out and sue the county for thousands, even millions of dollars because uh, we had a rundown jail that you couldn't do anything with. It, it was it just reached its service. Oh no, I remember I've been here, I understand all that. And I'm not saying it's not needed. All I'm saying is we can't have everything we want. We live in Baldwin County and some things we just have to accept and it make a little cheaper to live out of it. is about the jail. Well, and I know the reservoir is tied into the water bill, right? But I, but I do agree with you. But it's it's like a little it's like a little seesaw, man. I mean, you know, somebody did it to put that that sewer plant up there at the Georgia. You know, somebody did it. We have to make these hard decisions every now and then to keep adding these little pieces to keep it keep it all together. But at some point in time, the people got to have enough to pay the tax bill. If you don't get some industry in here. And that's there's, lots, there's some point in time you have to say, but these no more on the citizens. We can't get business, and we stop. Because eighty eight percent of it, as you well know, is paid by us. But what you're saying though is about the business. You they they will not even look at a footprint without sewage anymore. I, mean, I don't understand that. I agree. I, mean, I agree with that. We need sewage in the county. I don't argue. But I'm just saying, at some point in time, eighty eight percent of the tax bill by the taxpayers is enough. So something has to give. I agree. To keep it down or something, we just can't continue coming up. And I'm not criticizing. We can't continue coming up with the kind of budgets we have. We're still the taxpayer paying 80, 88 percent of the bill. I agree. I agree. Just can't. It's that's just what, that simple. That's why we're going to continue to plant them seeds. And any ideas you got, bring them to me. We'll love. Well, you know, the easiest way to cut your budget is cut your manpower. I mean, that's the quickest and easiest way to do that. But that's not always the right answer, too, and I don't know if I have the right answer to do it, but we, we just can't continue to well, keep you know, at home if I didn't have money putting money nice things out there. That commercial is a side job. we got to get our side <coughs> job. You know, for instance, a painter. It's nice. Do we really need a painter? I don't know. I mean, just throwing that out there to think about. Do we really need a painter? I don't know the answer to that. Can we justify an HV guy? I don't know. But we just, will we get it? I don't know if you're going to approve it or not, but it's, you know, you ask for ideas and where to do things. At some point in time, we got to quit. How's the movie studio working out? Is that generating anything? Okay. The movie studio? <coughs> Didn't we invest in a movie studio or? How was that? Yeah, yeah there, there's a contract on the movie studio right now. It should close within a month. Okay. So it's going to be sold uh, to uh, to a company that will make a newspaper announcement. We'll let them make the announcement. So okay. Going to clear the debt. Oops. And we'll retire the debt with that payment, right? Um. Will we? I mean, this is what. I can't answer that. These I guys have to answer that. that so. <laughs> Well, it doesn't fully retire the debt, Paul. What it does, it puts it on the tax roll so that it will begin generating taxes to, to offset. But to hold on to it, uh, you know, I, I wasn't involved in county government at the time when that right. decision was made. Uh, but it was made, and we got it. And the Board of Commissioners feels like it's the, the best move. Uh, to oh, I'm not arguing that, but I'm just saying if we sell it for one, whatever you sell it for, is that money we get, is that going to go to pay the debt off for that property? Is that revenue yeah. flag to yeah. go to the bond is the question. Yeah, will that pay off the bond? That's my question. It, it's, it's, you guys got to put that towards the bond. It's, um, the, in the bond legal description, 
uh, you, you can't you have to reinvest it into uh, economic development, growth, and jobs and business. So you can't pay the bonds off early. You have to keep them for the maturity of the bond. Do you know more detail? The bonds can be paid off at during call dates. So at, when you issue a bond, it's for a five-year bond typically. Okay. And those mature at a particular time. And this, let me let me go back to that bond and see when. I think it's over the, um, sorry. That one will in 2031. So you should be able to, in 2021, you could pay that debt off. You and how much is a bond for that? I can't read that um, chart. The bond is actually $6.8 million. It was issued at 6.8. There is an outstanding amount of 5.2. Okay. So that like, bond was spent on the film studio and the hangar. It wasn't okay. spent all on the film studio. All I'm just asking is we right. whatever we sell, we gotta put that towards a however you want to word it right. to pay the bond off. That's my question. Well the, the thing is it's actually on the film studio is owned by the IBA. And I'm okay. getting into way more than I need to be getting into. So y'all speak up whenever you want to. <laughs> um, the film studio is owned by the IBA. So the IBA will actually receive the funds for that film studio. Okay. If they give those funds back to the county, yes, that would be used to pay off the debt. If those funds don't come back to the county, I don't have any money. Are they not obligated? They're not obligated to give They're it back to the county. To give back to the county. So and you guys, as being a board of commissioners, you can certainly press that upon them to give it back, I guess. Okay. For the Okay, so I mean, that's like spending more on your credit card. For an amount that won't clear the debt, but then we don't know if the funds are going to come back to even go toward the debt, right? Is that? That's correct. Okay. Well, that's the sharp stick in the gap. <laughs> I like that. So, with the new jail, when they complete that, are they going to be able to make any revenue from housing prisoners from? Out of county? You know what? I'm not even going to attempt to, to answer that. Uh, my my guy had a family thing there. He would be here, you know. But uh, but I'll get you an answer to that. How about that? Cool. I, I don't want to speculate on I mean, I know that typically they did in the past. Yeah, they have in the past, but that's been way past. Other counties make money off you know, neighboring counties. I would venture to assume if there's bed space and if there's manpower, detention, officer power to make sure that those prisoners are safe and the public safe and that ours aren't at risk, that he would explore that idea because he has an opinion. <coughs> but again, that's his call. I have no issue with the jail. We voted for that. I don't care about that at all. No, we, mm -hmm. we took that on. Yeah. And the right. detention guys are getting in good step. And I love our cute little guys in the uniform. So. <laughs> the city has really kind of got my nerves at the moment. What is it? Let's just sit and make it go away. But... Come on, right? We've had that film studio, excuse me, up for sale a couple of times, if I'm correct, right? It's kind of okay. fell through. We spend money after to caretake it, turn the lights on, and it costs us money. Yeah. I have an idea. Way. That's Back row is going to kill me, but the 92 widening, it should be made into a toll road. <laughs> toll road. <laughs> Done. Right <laughs> now. Bite your tongue. Uh, <laughs> Mayor, truck traffic allowed. Mayor, truck traffic allowed. No. <laughs> if you're a falling resident, you get a lower rate. If you're coming from Doug, you've got no idea. The middle, the middle two about lanes about are going to be the cross lane. Oh, I'm sorry, but it's so drastic. I mean, is that not a great idea? No. Why? Is it, oh, you can't do it because it's a state highway? Have any kind of tax go down or go away? Well, they did it, you know, with the roller coaster thing. We would have that.
<laughs> Just give you guys ideas to make up. Well, has anybody else got anything? Chuck, thank you for hosting. Yeah, thank you for the comments. Yeah. Well, I, I appreciate you. I, I appreciate your comments. I mean, because those are the things. I mean, if, even if you adamantly oppose something, or even if we're in, on it in, in different corners of a fight, I mean, at least I know your side. I know what's going on, and then, you know, I can respect somebody for standing up and, and saying what they what they feel, and, uh, and and we'll take all that into consideration. I think having them out. But like I said, you're not looking, I know that looks like a weird thing, six million dollars off, but, but you're not looking at something that's that's unusual. This but it gets chopped down and, and run through the mill and, and uh, this is the beginning of the process. Just real quick, one last thing and then we can all go. Most of the new board ran on a platform of we won't raise your taxes. So are you guys sticking to that, or are you basing it on millage rate, or are you basing it on... You can, I can say no new taxes all day long, but what am I basing that on? Am I basing it on your millage rate, which would still check, your taxes could still change if your assessment changes? Or am I basing it on whatever, pull whatever I you want to ask me where my moral? I can't. I can't answer for everybody, but I can answer where my moral compass is on that. And it's that if I increase the millage, then I've increased your taxes. Now, if your taxes increase because of assessed value, well, you gain value in your home. Therefore, you're paying more taxes on it. You know, I don't really see that as raising taxes. I see that as your taxes. You know, your house value went up. You know, and you know. I mean, that's. Is that a fair answer? And, it uh, is fair. And yeah. uh, and when we look at this, am I saying that? Uh, you know, I'm the one who said that. When I was asked that, I didn't say that. I didn't say I would raise taxes. I said I think it wouldn't be necessary if we could get the businesses and stuff going. So uh, if it was to be something to where I'm gonna starve, you know, some employees to death, you know, to, to make that happen. But I don't think that's gonna be the case at all. I think we're gonna be able to, to I hope, to maintain. That's my vote is to try to maintain that millage, you know, at the same same percentage it is now, and just let the assessed value increase the taxes a little bit, but. That'd make me a happy camper. Yeah. And it would me too. Yeah. And, uh, and, we'll work with it. and in all that, we don't know what the school board's going to do. Exactly. So that exactly. can raise the village. Yeah, but we yeah. got Jason coming up. So. <laughs> we'll be that that one, if I may. And, and that's one thing that everybody needs to understand too is that what we're talking about tonight is about 34% of your tax bill right to have it right. It's, it's right around 34%. So I'm, I'm glad you mentioned that. I think that's an interesting point. Well, but. Along that line, the, the millage rate that she posted earlier that shows us at number three, like Cobb is at number two, but Cobb, and, and I know this is school related, it's not you, but Cobb gives better like discounts to the seniors on the school board. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that those kind of things are trying to And out. their yes. officers can't afford to live in their own county because of their price of housing and, and, and apartments. Yes. Yeah. I saw the Georgia gang talk about that on one of their shows just recently. And, and you know what, they, they've got their own challenges. But I will say this, I'll say when you talk about really having good footing, you're in a county that probably has, you know, we don't got the budget they got, but you know, we've been a little bit more judicial than they have been. You know, they, they've got some challenges coming up. So, I mean, you can't, you, it's, it's kind of when you're comparing it, you got to look behind the curtain a little bit to see some of that. Well, I was born and raised in Colorado, and I don't want to sit close behind the curtain. Well, no, there's some reasons to sit. I'm still working on it. But thank, I, I want to thank all of you for coming tonight. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. George is Thank awesome. You. I wish he was here. I mean, oh my gosh. He, it, I mean, this this guy sends me stuff. I send it out and he sends it back. The marshal, uh, what's uh, Trevor? Uh, yes. Awesome. Just an awesome guy. Uh, every one of these guys. Scott, Scott's been around forever. He knows where he's been to the roads. He knows uh, where all the right roads lie. He knows where all the bodies are there. We got Tap. I mean, look at her. She's uh, Rebecca keeps us uh, keeps us all afloat. And, 
and she just keeps us abreast of everything. I'm telling y'all, y'all got a super staff and Tabitha, she is an impression. I mean, I'm thankful, you know, she's she gave us a bite of the elephant because all she did. That's a that's a small bite of the elephant, but that's about all I can take at one time. <laughs> And I appreciate Sandy and Brian. I appreciate y'all coming out and supporting us tonight and chairman. Did anybody else got anything? James? James is the guy who uh, bless his heart. I mean, I really feel bad for him. I think he's trying to hide right now. Yeah. I, mean, I was going to was gonna, I was gonna compliment you, but I'm going to stir up this. Send a letter to everybody, you know, welcoming me to my door. All my notes, the yeah. notices will go out. Maybe. My name's on each one of them. That's my phone number. Thank you. That's me. Thank you. <laughs>